want to have a quick look at how we also could use uh, forces in vector form as well. Because remember, all this time when we've been like subtracting forces for a resultant force, maybe when we did like this on one of, uh, wait, which kind of question could we have it? Uh, I'm trying to find a resultant one. This where we had like the 20 plus 15 cos 60 and we did minus 12 cos 50. We minus that one. If you think about this force as a vector, it would just be a negative number, okay? So just trying to show you that you can also think about forces as vectors and sometimes that can be useful to do. So we've got three things here um, and it says convert each force to the form ai plus bj where i and j are the positive x and y directions respectively. Also write your answer in column vector form. So super quickly, if this vector is going and this force is going upwards like this, we can see it's going to split into these two forces. Running along the bottom is 8 cos 30, and along the side is 8 sine 30. Now, we should convert those, because it seems like that's what the question wants us to do. 8 cos 30 is 4 root 3, and 8 sine 30 is just 4. So if I was going to put that in I and J form, Sufian, what would that be in I and J form? Good, and so in column vector, it's just 4 root 3. Four. The fact they're both, po both positive is telling me that they're going to the right and they're going up because that's how we know that they work, okay? Question two, um, remember it always starts from where the arrow begins. So we've got this one, if it's going diagonally like this, what should these two things be? Up, down, left, right, what's it going to be a combination of? What are these two forces, up, down, left, right? Up, left. Up, left, okay, we've got up. And we've got left, OK? So this one is 6 cos 45, 6 sine 45. And both of those, 6 cos or sine 45, is 3 root 2. So that's a 3 root 2, and that's a 3 root 2. Hamza, what do you think that would be in I and J form? I should have said that's Newton's. What would this be in I and J form? Why is it a minus 3 root 2? Good, because it's going to the left. So we're just, it's like earlier on when we had things that were going to the left, they often were negatives. So if I was going to put that in column form, I get minus 3 root 2i plus 3 root 2j. And really, I should have said that this is Newton's, OK? Because we're still talking about forces here. So I can say that they are Newton's. Um, Muzik here, this one is going to split into a, these two forces. Are they along, up, down, right? right. Right and down. What's this one here? Um, 9 cos 37. 9 cos 37, which means that one's obviously the 9 sine 37. Let's just quickly work those out. So 9 cos 37, I'll do it to three decimal places, is 7.12. And 9 sine 27 is 4.09. So do you want to write that in I and J form for me, please? 7.12. Good. It's going downwards, so it will be a minus 4.09j. That's it in Newtons. Obviously, if I was going to put that into I and J form, it would just be 7.12 and minus 4.09. When you have forces that are written in vector form, it just becomes, sometimes it becomes easier to deal with things. How do you find the resultant of two vectors? Of two vectors? Add the squares. Whoa, 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 that's the magnitude. How do you find the resultant of two vectors, Ekram? No, that's if you're doing the position vectors. Yeah, to find the resultant of two vectors, you just add them. So remember if we had this was vector A and this was vector B, the resultant is A plus B. So it's the same thing. If you wanted to find the resultant force, you just add them. But that's weird, because when we were doing the resultant force on these things around the room, you were doing those forces minus those forces. Why are we doing subtracting there? Why are we doing those ones minus those ones? But now when we're doing them with vectors, we add them. Ronak? Yeah, because they're going in opposite directions. So it looked like what we were doing was forces to the left minus forces to the right. But actually, what we were really doing is adding them together in vector form. One is negative because when we're thinking about it in vector form, it's negative. Okay, so that's really just trying to marry these two ideas together here. Okay, so we're going to combine some forces. 
Um, you can combine these forces together in quick ways by writing them as vectors. There are two methods for this. One method I've, I've already done. I've done method two because it's a complete mess. I just, you'd never do this method, but it's just possible that it can be done. So I'll tell you what it is afterwards. But it says here, two forces, P and Q, act on a particle as shown. P has a magnitude of 10 newtons, great. And Q has a magnitude of 8 newtons. Work out the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Okay, so this is where vectors can be useful because resultant force, I mean, we could even do this without vectors, but this is just like a nice technique. If we were going to do it without vectors, what we could do is find out how much of P and Q was going to the right. We could add them up, and that would be our force going to the right. We could compare how much of P is going up <coughs> and how much of Q is going down and find out the resultant force by doing the bigger one, take away the smaller one. And then you would have two separate parts. You'd have an acrossward part and an upward part. To find out the resultant of that, you'd then do Pythagoras. It's a little bit easier to do in vector form. So first of all, we're going to take the, uh, the force, P, and we're going to try and write it in vector form. So what, what's P going to be when I do it into this one and this one here? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, so that would be, it would be root 2 over 2 because it's 10, that would be 10 cos 45 and 10 sine 45. I'm just going to write it like this now. It's going to be 10, okay, yes, I know. <laughs> 10 cos 45 and 10 sine 45. What's, what is 10 cos 45? A <laughs> I'm joking. So that's what P is, okay, and they're both positive because it's going to the right and it's going up. We're now going to just say what the vector Q is. We've got Q coming along here and coming down. The along one is 8 cos 30. The down one is 8 sine 30. So Zubair, what would Q be in its um, column form? Mm -hmm. Good, because that bit's going down. Now, we know that the resultant force, which I'm going to call R, will just be P plus Q. We've come across that idea before, that the resultant of vectors is adding them. The resultant, when they're not vectors, we've seen them as kind of subtracting, but that was because of the directions of them. So we're just going to add these things together. So you get 10 cos 45 plus 8 cos 30, and then you get 10 sine 45 minus 8 sine 30, and we'll see what that is. I don't expect it to be nice. So we have, I'm just going to go straight into decimal form. We've got 13.9992. And then we've got 10 sine 45 minus 8 sine 30. And we've got 3.071. That's what the resultant force is. But the question asked us something different. It said, well, what did it say that we haven't found out yet? Magnitude. Find the magnitude. Do we know how to find the magnitude of this? How? Pythagoras. So the magnitude of R is the 13.9 squared plus the 3.07 blah, 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 squared, square rooted. So let's square that and add our 13.9 squared. We'll square root it and we get the answer 14.3 newtons to three significant figures, OK? So it's just kind of easier to deal with it in vector form. It just seems to make sense to turn it into vectors. But there are other ways of doing this, OK? We could have found out that the i component was 13.99992, because we can see it's a 10 cos 45 and it's an 8 cos 30. Those two forces add to give this. The 10 sine 45 minus the 8 sine 30 gives you this. You then have got those two forces, which you can Pythagorize and come up with that last bit. Yeah. Yeah, so the direction we now need to think about is we know that R, if I was going to do a sketch of what R looks like, it, R being resultant, it's going 13 to the right and 3 up. So we're going to find the angle. So we've now got that it's going 13.99 to the right and it's been told that it's going 3.07 upwards. So this is the resultant force, and we want to find out the direction that it's going in. 
How do I find the angle of theta? Yeah, so we will say that theta is the inverse tan of the opposite over the adjacent. 3.0710 divided by 13.9992. So we get 12.4 degrees, 12.4 degrees, but is that enough? Shouldn't I give some extra things? What should I say? 12.4 degrees what? From the horizontal where? Up or below? Above or below? Above. We should say 12.4 degrees above the horizontal. Okay. We should say 12.4 degrees above the horizontal. This is where rounding in mechanics can be useful. If you wanted to, you could have given that answer to two significant figures. I mean, let's say you'd rounded this a bit heavy-handed, you rounded this a bit heavy-handed. Hopefully, 12 would still be like the right kind of answer. So you can always, if you need to at the end, do it to two significant figures instead of three. The other way of doing this question is to use the triangle law for vector addition, which is unpleasant. Okay. You could take the two vectors, which was p and q. This is uh, q, and you could have done plus p. The resultant would be the result of those two vectors added together. You've got to find out what all of these different angles are inside here. You then do the cosine rule to find out what r is, and then you do the sine rule to find out what theta is. It's really, really long and kind of not necessary. Yes? <laughs> You don't have to do it like that. We don't have to. Well, that's how we've got to OK, so you know you can, now you know you can change it into vectors. Or if you, don't, if you forget that you can change it into vectors, you could just look at this diagram up here. And we know, shh, shh, we know that the along force is going to be those ones added. And the up force is going to be those ones subtracted. So you can just do Pythagoras to find out what r is. And then you can do Sokotoa to find out what theta is. Yeah? Many ways of doing these kind of questions. Well, um, so I will, I think you have got some questions to do on the next page here. And you've got this one here, which is either if you can do one of them now or you can just get them done for homework for Thursday. I'll tell you what, what's the time? 55. You can do the, this one and this one for homework as well as finishing off the questions we did earlier on. Okay? So I'll leave it here because some of you may not have got that all written down just yet.